Hello guys, um, I'm going to try to get this video out as best as I can. I can tell you I spent all day trying to get it done, so I believe that it will be done. Okay, so the, the thing that I'm going to be talking to you about today is called Sex and the Churches. I've entitled it Sex and the Churches as the Lord gave it to me, and it was actually given to me a few weeks ago, and now I've got the green light to talk about it. All right, so Sex and the Churches, as you know that the relationships with God. Uh, God is a God of relationships. He has ordained these relationships for us to enjoy and they can be enjoyable, enriching and rewarding as long as they are done according to the way God ordained them to be and following the laws and the, and, and the principles that God has put in place for relationships. So throughout the Bible, you read about various relationships and, um, and what God expects from each and every one of them. And that's for relationship from intimate to platonic to just with mankind. And so just to name a few of the relationships we're gonna talk about or the relationship that God has ordained beginning with Adam and Eve, it's going to be uh, relationships between, you know, um, a uh, child to the parent. We are commanded to love our parent, to, to um, obey our parents, you know, as children. And then once we get older, we need to honor our parents. Okay, and and so we have the relationships with the wife and the husband that she is to submit to her husband as unto the Lord, her own husband, keyword, own. And so that's given there and other directives of how a woman or the wife should conduct herself with her husband. There's also instructions on how the husband is to be with a wife, how he cherishes her as he cherishes his own body and loves her as Christ loved the church. There are relationships between the older women with the younger, the older men with the younger men. Our relationships within the body of Christ, the way we treat people outside of the church, the example that we're supposed to set, how we treat our enemies, the importance of forgiveness, of love, of humility, one to another other, esteeming the other more than yourself. So those things are in the word of God. And so we see that relationships are very important. Um, so a lot of times the enemy is going to come in and try to pervert those relationships. And why would he try to pervert our relationships? Because our relationships are our individual, personal, the ones that we have at home and with others, how those things are all important and how we are within the church. Our relationship within the church is all important because it all encompasses and ties into how we're able to represent Christ to other people. That is the most important thing. Our relationships affects our um, ability to do things effectively for the kingdom of God. So it is important. So the enemy comes in to infiltrate that. And one of the biggest places that he's going to come to, to, um, to, uh, to bring disruption in within the ministry is through sexual immorality. He's going to do that because that's something that is addictive. It's, um, toxic it is once depending on how deeply you're in it it's hard to get out of it it takes a lot of time and laying yourself before the altar of god to be able to change so how does he do that by bringing sexual immorality into the churches in a lot of ways so he's going to come in with uh uh, let's say fornication. Fornication is one that is between the single people, single people like myself, where we are being fed the lie and deception that, you know what, it's okay to have sex before marriage. That's old fashioned now to be waiting. Okay. Um, why not try it out before you buy it? Okay. Then we're also given the, the, the validation of, well, you're in a committed relationship with a Christian man, you're going to get married or a Christian woman or you are not as bad as sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so who's sleeping with far more people than you. You just got this one or two and you don't do it as often. And so those are the things that the enemy will tell you. In marriages, you're encouraged or people are committing adultery where they're sleeping with people outside of their marriages. And there, the devil would give them the justification of, oh, well, you know, your wife's not doing what she used to do. Your husband is not as attentive as he used to be. They don't look the way they used to. They're not as affectionate. They cheated first. So you know what? It's okay for you to do this and get some. If they have an open relationship where they're bringing people inside their beds, then the enemy will tell you, you know what, a man and woman and husband and wife does and the bed is on the file. Well, it becomes a file once you bring out an outside element into your bed. It's defiled, it's undefiled when it's between the two of you. So he will bring that in there. Then there's also the lie of um, 
masturbation and pornography to make you feel because you're not involving other people because it's something that you're doing by yourself behind closed doors it's better than actually getting involved with another person getting diseases and why not just release some of this tension so that you don't end up falling right so the enemy will tell you all these things and the the bottom line of the trump card for all those relationships that i just told you is the fact that they will be that grace card that's pulled out like god is a god of forgiveness and grace and 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 he understand and so the enemy will tell you all those things and christians will say that amongst each other about god's grace and his mercy while totally ignoring the fact that god is also a god of severity we can't pinpoint and take out all the 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 the, the sunny sides of the bible okay we want a sunny side up but we're not actually also looking at the other part where god talks about the wages of sin is death it tells you that whoremongers and sexual the sexual immoral will not enter the kingdom of heaven where the word says God is light and there's do no darkness at all in him if we say that we are light and walk in darkness we lie and the truth is not in us we can't ignore those things so that's what the enemy will do and will tell you we also have to keep in mind with the sexual sin what is happening you know even with uh for example masturbation and pornography you be like oh well i'm not doing anything with anybody but you are maybe you're not the the you are you're doing it with a spirit there's a spirit that cleaves itself to you once you do that how does that happen because the act of sex itself it's not so much the physical the physical is a connection that is needed um, in the physical realm but it's more of a spiritual connection so when that when you're doing something outside of marriage you're releasing spirits there's a spiritual exchange that is taking place and outside of marriage you're exchanging strongholds you're exchanging uh, uh, um, strongholds uh, you're exchanging principalities you're exchanging all the darkness that is within either one of you that you've been attached to tied to you're exchanging depression you're exchanging anxiety you're exchanging jealousy if one of you or have been with someone unknowingly or knowingly with someone who is bisexual you're exchanging all those spirits and before you know it, you're wondering why you have certain appetites and certain desires and so that is the thing sex outside of marriage is a spiritual exchange so if you are masturbating or watching pornography once you release and once you open up yourself to that you're defiling your temple and you're allowing a spirit to fuse itself to you and the, the thing is that the enemy will always allow us to think that we are in control you're in control the only control you have is to make a choice you have the control the only thing that you have is a choice so you're gonna whatever you say yes to is what is going to take control of you but you are not in control you have the control to say yes or no I choose good or I choose evil and whichever one you choose then you will be led that way and the enemy always works by allowing you to feel like you are in control so how does this work well what's happening is the enemy has creeped into the churches has creeped into ministries by allowing these things to go on so people are turning a blind eye a lot of ministers are turning the other way because either they themselves are in it or they don't want to disrupt the flow of the money and the attendance and so they want to preach one thing without telling people People, giving people you know the undiluted word and the truth so they can be delivered another thing is happening people are going to the churches with their families and they they're breaking up a family goes in married someone's getting divorced they've lost their wife they lost their husband someone's sleeping with a wife someone's sleeping with a husband all these things are going on you see the thing with fornication it starts out by being oh let's have this illegal sex let's have sex before marriage then once you get married now you're having sex outside your marriage that spirit takes you to different levels and it may not apply to everybody but a a lot of times when sexual immorality is in the church is there to separate to divide to cause turmoil to come into your family it wants to bleed down into your children that's why if you're watching these things at home and you think you can hide them what happens the enemy's gonna make a way that that stuff pops up on your kids iPhone it's gonna pop up on the computer that's how people get caught people think if they're sexting and texting and chatting it's it's nothing but the enemy comes in to infiltrate the body of Christ that way and the way that that works and how the infiltration works and and how it comes in is because once you when you defile your body your your view becomes distorted 
The enemy comes in and your understanding is darkened. So when your understanding is darkened, when you what, what you once felt guilt about, you will now become indignant about it. You will justify it. You will say who needs to mind their business that no one is supposed to judge you. No one's supposed to talk about it. And then everyone say only God can judge me, can judge me on my sin. And I want you to really think about what you're saying. Think about what you're actually saying. You want God to judge you rather than have your brother and sister present day time and moment to be able to pull your coat gently in love and help you and hold you and bring you to the place that you need to be. You want God to judge you. I think you need to really read the Bible and think about what you're saying. I read the 30, 40, 80, 90 people talk to me about something that I'm doing now than for me to stand before God and he judge me on my sin. Okay. We are here to love each other, but we're also here to judge each other righteously and what does it mean by judging judging the wrong way is to tell you what you deserve you're going to hell this is what's going to happen to you this is what should happen to you that's wrong but judging meaning by the word of God you do something I see your fruit I can line it up with God's word it's not right it doesn't line up I can come to you as a brother or a sister in Christ and try to get you on that right path advise you without trying to embarrass you put you out there and if you choose to go and you choose to accept you do if you don't you don't that is not judging the way people want to say it is in a negative way there we have to police each other up we have to be there to our left right front and back to cover one another but that is not happening anymore people who are seeing the truth or awake and when they speak out they're being made to feel like oh you're judging this is you know this is we need to understand each other if you say something you're being told if you was spiritually minded you wouldn't notice these things that's a lie from the devil and I'm going to tell you why God says in his word it says to beware of false prophets and teachers and wolves wolves who come in as sheep clothing so the, the term beware means you need to be aware of what's going on and that you will know them by their fruit he did not say ignore it it doesn't say it'll go away what it says is to beware when you see a sign that says beware you immediately begin to pull back and you know you need to be careful and you need to kind of move away from that okay so don't be fooled by people that's telling you if you were not in your flesh you wouldn't notice what's going on with me. Me. No, you have something called discernment. You have something called the Holy Spirit that's going to show you what's going on. And another thing, so you have the right to speak and to say in love as God guides you. But if they don't want to go with it and they still want to stay there, leave them alone. But it doesn't mean you have to stay there and put your family at risk. But what is happening, the church is becoming weakened because everyone is fighting against one another. And the reason why everyone is tearing each other apart within the ministry is because one of the reasons for unforgiveness is one big thing. But being that we're talking about sexual immorality, sexual immorality blinds you. Sexual immorality alienates you from God. It separates you from God. It blocks things. It makes things very much occluded. So you're seeing a little bit, but because you're in sin, the enemy will make you think in your head and your mind that you're good because you're still functioning in church, because you still can preach an effective ceremony, because you can still sing and people fall out. But remember, Michael Jackson made a lot of people fall out too. I remember seeing a concert when he was in Berlin in the 90s and he was just standing there like a statue, like he popped out of the ground. I was excited and screaming too. And he popped out of the ground. He stood there for a good while. And while he was standing there, he was standing like this. Like, <laughs> I don't know who said it. it was awesome. But then he was standing there for like two, three minutes. People were screaming. People were passing out. People were crying. So what I'm telling you is the flesh, when that music and excitement is getting pumped up, but reality is what you are when you're by yourself. Don't get caught up with that. God is calling us to a higher level of accountability. He's going to first judge the church before he goes outside. We also need to set an example for the outside. When people come to the church and you act just like, look like, do like, I don't need to be up in here. And that is what is going to, that's what's happening. There's a falling away that is happening. And sexual immorality is one of the biggest things. Sex in the churches. 
People are sleeping with people in churches. People are looking at people through the eyes of lust in the churches. People are being allowed to get up before the people in some little stringy stuff, you know, and, and tight things. And, you know, the enemy of church is bodycon.com, you know, just all kinds of stuff that people are putting on and strappy shoes and juicy toes out and greasy legs and all these things and people tight, tight shirts and suits and fitted, whatever. Come on, guys. We have to have an eye to see. It is not about bondage. God wants us all to look good. I like putting myself together. I like wearing things, but we must use discretion. The Holy Spirit will dress you. And when you're standing in front of the mirror and you look at yourself and you see, you see it before everyone else sees it. Okay, men, you see what you got on before you walk out. But the main, the main culprits, I hate to say it like that, are the women because we just look different. We just look good. So we can set that off. You know, the, some great men and rule, great men and rulers were brought down by a woman, and it wasn't because she had a weapon in her hand. She just had beauty and the wiles and the ability, and that's how you know. That's something that I did in another video um, called uh, uh, Don't Be a Stumbling Block, The Power of Woman. We have to be able to hone that in. Now, is that putting that on us, the women? No, because men, they also have to stand before the Lord and be accountable. But the thing is, we are destroying each other by sex. Sex, it's addictive. It feels good. So we're just doing it. We're just doing it. And it's blocking us and moving us further. And Satan knows better than to be like, oh, I'm going to bring you to darkness and I want to pull you away from God. He'll let you have your sliver of church. He'll let you holler and scream and do whatever you want to do in the ministry. Those demons will be right there. But guess what? When you leave, they know that you're getting ready to get back in bed with somebody. They know that you have your, your porn on pause. They know that there's somebody that you're going to see that night. They know you're going to keep sexting and chatting. You, They know that you pastor or pastor's wife about to go and act like you're counseling somebody and 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 and, and sleeping around with people and doing things and and your, your skirt already two four inches above your knees while you're standing up and these pastors and leaders that's counseling people counseling men and women and sleeping with these men and women and it could be men on men and women on women these things are going on it's become a ground that breeds sin and darkness so you see with darkness i remember once Pr priscilla shire gave this analogy and she said she loved to go fishing with her kids and they normally turn this boat upside down until they get ready to use it and she gets all because she knows when she flips it over all these things gonna hop out slither out whatever well when there's darkness within the church because oh because there's darkness of course it's covered it's moist and they breathe there and they gonna draw to that it's the same thing in the church where there's sexual immorality and these things are going on check. Darkness creeps in. All kinds of stuff is going on. You wondering what's going on. Why there's turmoil. Why are you suddenly arguing with your wife? Why all these things are going on? Because you're in sexual immorality. The late Stephen Darby said to get an idea of if the, uh, the, the altar of a church is defiled. When a church is defiled, the altar, that main place, that norm is the altar that's supposed to be sacred. You will know if it's, de if it's defiled by who is allowed to go up there and stand up there. Who is up there ministering? Who is there? The condition of the heart is going to show not only in your clothes, because now I'm not condemning people if you don't have it and you just start not your baby and you're growing, that's fine. I'm not knocking anybody what you have on. But at the same time, you come to God as you are and you don't stay as you are. Okay, so now you will know the condition of the church by what stands up before you. Be aware of these things. Now there's good news. This can be changed. What you have to do, first of all, is to be willing, a willing heart. God, I want to stop this. I'm disgusted because most of the times when people are doing these things, once they get finished, they're disgusted. You're sitting there like, oh, why did I do this? Okay, and but then you're back at it again because it's a stronghold. So what you have to do is get before the Lord, ask him to forgive you for your sins, ask him to lead you, get in his word, get in prayer, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, have a accountability partner, not someone that's struggling with you. But more than anything, before any accountability partners, you better believe by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be changed, but it's by getting in this word, it's by getting in his presence, it's by fasting. Some things will not come out by prayer alone, 
alone, but by fasting. And you have to be consistent. The easy thing, the road is not easy, but what's easy is submitting yourself to God and saying, God, here I am. And he will do the rest. We are without excuse. We have the word, we have the power, but the world is looking at the church and going, man, please, they, pfft, we doing better than they are. My goodness, the first ladies are dressing better than the first lady in the, in the White House is dressed more decent than first ladies in churches. People outside of church and in business handle businesses sometimes better than how people are handling their business in the church. Because you see, when there's a problem and sometimes there's conflict, there's, there's a conflict resolution classes that they're going to give you. There's a union. There's things that you can go to when things are happening on the outside. But on the inside, they, oh, it's just a mess. So what the enemy does is to get us weakened on the inside through sexual immorality so that we're asleep, so that we're lost in our own sins and we're unaffected. And then people come in and they're trying to get free, but they get caught up in bondage because it's already there and they're still babes in Christ. We're going to be held accountable. Sex in the churches, it's time for us to open up our mouths, stop standing by, do the bystander effect of just looking. Well, if nobody say it, I'm not going to say nothing. Then you get before the people and you're ministering and you're letting out these things on the church and on people. Don't think that, yes, we are covered and you can be covered because God's got you, especially if you're really walking in Christ. But he's also going to open your eyes and show you things. And you have to allow the Lord to lead you in what you need to do because there are churches that they're good churches and, and they actually are, have a heart for the Lord. The ministers, the preachers have a heart for God, wants to do the things of God. No one's perfect, but they hold everyone accountable. We're moving together for oneness, for wholeness and winning souls. And then you have those rogue churches where basically someone just said they were saved, but they never changed change are completely unregenerated and they are doing a lot of things when you're in churches like that open up your eyes pay attention and get yourself out of there it's not about people say you got to stay here no i don't not a mess i will not okay so i'm going to tailor it down here and scale it down that by saying you can be delivered i can say those same things because i walk that walked i walk that walk and so now I can sit here and say to you guys, God can change you. God can help you. God can put all those appetites and suppress them. When you get before him and you talk to him, he will show you where you first got, uh, you know, tainted with these things. He'll talk to you about detoxing yourself. He's going to talk to you about renouncing these relationships, presenting your body a living sacrifice, keeping yourself filled with his spirit because it's not enough to have a moment and be delivered now and then you're back to it. You have to keep yourself filled. He'll show you how to guard your ears and your eyes, things that you should and should not be looking at. Things, to, child, I tell you, I watch more Anne of Green Gables and little G-rated stuff and, and, and I do not watch certain certain things and that's because God has changed me and showed me how to guard myself and I stay in the word of God and I, I, I stay before his presence. You understand what I'm saying? So let's just get closer to God. Sex in the churches should not be, especially outside of your marriage. But let us stand and be accountable and know that God is a God of order. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God and he's calling us to be as such so we can be a light to the world okay thank you guys have a great day and um, i might be coming back with something else later